and good afternoon. It is Friday and that means it's time for our regular lunch and learn. Now today we're going to be talking about autoimmune disease. Now why are we talking about that? Because it is a very, very prevalent problem. Almost probably 50 to 60 percent of the people that we see in our clinic come in because of autoimmune issues. So what is an autoimmune issue? An autoimmune issue means that your body, your immune system, has been working so hard at trying to eliminate toxicity. Now, this can be environmental toxicity. This can be um, food toxicity. This can be uh, alcohol toxicity. This can be recreational drugs. It can also be pharmaceutical drugs. You know, anything that is not something that we are supposed to eat, according to the uh, manufacturer's guide, all right, we were never supposed to eat processed food. We were never supposed to eat foods that are not foods. So when we do that, our immune system is taking up time and energy dealing with those foreign substances. So it does not have the energy that it needs to work on our body to keep us healthy. Therefore, the immune system becomes confused. And when the immune system becomes confused, then it starts attacking itself. So we're going to look at this report today that's talking about autoimmunity. And it says that we have autoimmunity uh, symptoms for years before we're ever diagnosed. And so this is something, if you have been to the doctor, if you have said, I don't feel well, and the doctor says, yes, but your blood work is perfect, then this might be something that you really want to be listening to because we believe, I believe, that your body is the smartest person in the room. You know what you feel. You know what's going on in your body. Your blood test is fine. Your blood test is a moment in time, and it is your chemistry. If you are feeling X, Y, Z, then people need to affirm that that's what you're feeling. Uh, most people are not hypochondriacs. Most people are not making it up as they go along. And so we need to pay attention to what the person is saying. In my office, in my clinic, when somebody comes in and they say, Dr. Polly, I have X, Y, Z, or I feel X, Y, Z, but my doctor says something different, I always say, look, you are the smartest person in the room with respect to your body. You live in that body. You have a history of how that body is supposed to respond. You have a history of how that body is supposed to do what it does. And if it's not responding the way you're normally used for it to be responding, I know that wasn't really good grammar and I apologize, then there is something that's going on. So we're going to be looking at this report and this report is by a doctor, and I'm going to get this name crazy, Dadis Karazian, all right? He's got a website called, let me see if I can find it. Uh, let me see, uh, maybe it's somewhere else in the report. Uh, okay, yes, Dr. K News, okay, D-R, capital K, News, N-E-W-S dot com. So you can look more of his stuff. He is a PhD doctor with Harvard Medical School. So he's a researcher and um, he's got really good credentials behind his name. So if you want to know more about him, then that's the website that you can go to. So the article goes like this. While heart disease and cancer dominate the media, millions more people suffer from uh, a barrage of miserable and sometimes debilitating mystery symptoms. Okay, the symptoms can rob them of their vitality, their mobility, their zest for life, their mental ease, all these kind of things, and it can rob them of their livelihood and their relationships. So how many of you know people who can no longer go to work because their body just doesn't function? How many of you know people who have had their homes destroyed because somebody had some kind of mental or physical ailment that the doctor could have put a finger on and so it just absolutely destroyed their relationship. Well, we don't want to be those people and I don't want to, I don't want you to be those people either. So we're going to uh, talk about this and move, move on to this uh, with some information for you. So it says it takes most patients many years of visiting multiple doctors before they usually find one and find out that they have an autoimmune disease that is causing their symptoms. Until then, they are told by the doctor, quote, 
you are perfectly healthy. They are accused of making up the symptoms that don't exist and or they are prescribed um, antidepressants. Now, when I was a little girl and people had these mysterious illnesses, the doctor would always tell them that they had nerves and they would prescribe them uh, antidepressants because all they had was nerves. Now, we've come a little bit uh, from that era, and so I don't think people say that it is your nerves now, but they do say that it is depressed or it's all in your mind. The article goes on to say that the doctors do not take into account that the patients cannot get out of bed, they hurt all over, they have a lot of brain fog, they've lost their motivation uh, to do anything, they can't lose weight, but they're losing their hair, and they have a myriad of other unexplainable health issues. Now, I will just tell you, probably every third woman who comes in here, comes in here because she's losing her hair. What causes that? Well, thyroid dysfunction causes that. Autoimmunity causes that. Now, thyroid dysfunction can morph into a autoimmune disease. But when you're not absorbing your nutrition, when you're not getting what you need inside your body, then you're going to have some issues. So... I have a man that came to see me a couple of weeks ago. He had been to, I think he said, 20 different doctors in a two-week period, and nobody could find out what was wrong with him. So this is something that we see hands-on every day, every week, and so this is something that's near and dear to my heart because most of the people that I am dealing with are people who have autoimmune issues. So when these people find their way to a functional medicine doctor, testing show that many of them suffer from the early stages of autoimmune reactivity, a condition in which an imbalanced immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the person's own body tissue, usually slowly over many years. Autoimmunity, autoimmunity can attack any tissue, any enzyme, any hormone, or cell in the body depending on the person's makeup, their predisposition, and their unique inflammatory triggers. So how do you know if you have an inflammatory trigger, right? So an inflammatory trigger is if you're eating something, if you uh, have a reaction to that, if you go into a building that has um, smells and that kind of thing. I'll tell you, almost 20 years ago, my husband, he wasn't my husband then, but we were looking for a wedding veil. We were going to get married. We were going to look for a wedding veil. And so we had gone into this bridal store. And while we were in the bridal store, I'm looking at jewelry. I'm looking at headdresses. I'm looking at all the different things that I'm looking at. I don't know where he is, but he's in another part of the store. When he came back to me, his eye, I think it was his right, I think it was his right eye, was like bulging out of his head because he was having an allergic reaction. Now, this bridal store was right next door to a uh, dry cleaner. And so, you know, dry cleaners have all these different chemicals. And I think he got too close to the dry cleaning side of the store. Anyway, he had had some eye issues previously. So his eye was really tender. We got in the truck after I had made my purchase. In fact, he had said, look, I got to get out of here. I'm having some kind of reaction. We, I made my purchase, got into the truck. And I, I kid you not, his eyeball looked hexagonal and it was very proud in the eye socket. I was very scared for him. Fortunately, he lived not far from the bridal store. We were able to go. Uh, he had some medication that he had had for a previous eye issue. He had had some surgery on his eye. And we put that medication in his eye and within a couple of hours, he was fine. He did tell me, I will never go in that store again. And I said, yes, I think that's a really good idea. Why? Because he was triggered. Something in his body was triggered because of the chemicals that were in that store. Now, I remember my grandmother, this was several years ago, my grandmother had moved into a new apartment. It had brand new carpet. And she had all kind of allergy issues because of the off-gassing of the formaldehyde that was in the carpeting that was brand new. So we all know that new car smell, that new carpet smell, that new leather smell, whatever, with our home furnishings and our vehicles. Well, that is the off-gassing of the chemicals that are being used to make those particular um, items. And so if we are healthy and if we have a good 
um, drainage system. We're moving our bowels like we need to. We're breathing deeply like we need to. We're, you know, our kidneys are functioning like we need to. Our sweat glands are working like they need to. Then as we come into contact with these allergens, then we're pushing them out the body in those four different channels. If we're shut down for whatever reason, then we're not pushing them out of the body. The most significant sign that you are not processing your environmental toxins is weight, excess weight. In the United States, two out of every three people are heavy. One out of every three people is obese. That means extremely heavy. So we live in a culture where we just overeat or we are overly exposed to toxicity and it shows in the physical body. So when this happens, the immune system has to work really, really hard. And if the immune system is working really, really hard and we don't change our ways, change our lifestyle, then we have these issues and we have this confusion of the immune system and it starts attacking our body. We literally start to kill ourselves. I had a, a opportunity to meet a lady today. There's a new clinic coming to town and what they do is they do brain scans. Now, why did they do brain scans? Because they're trying to see how the brain is functioning. Now, this is good for uh, if you have uh, mental diseases, if you are a substance abuser, either alcohol or uh, recreational drugs, if you've had a stroke. It's a different kind of scan than a CAT scan. It's a different kind of scan than an MRI. And so what they're doing with this scan is they're actually looking at the brain and looking at the toxicity in the brain. And is that causing the uh, immunity, the, the neural uh, diseases, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, Parkinson's, that kind of thing in the brain. And so there are all kinds of tools that are coming out that we can actually see what the body is doing and how the brain is processing. So this is really, really important. Common examples of autoimmune diseases include Hashimoto's thyroiditis, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, vitiligo, celiac disease, Graves disease, type 1 diabetes, lupus, and some inflammatory bowel disease, some Crohn's disease. Some is not autoimmune, but a lot of it is. So when our immune system is working properly, it is cleaning out all the things that don't belong in our body. Now, we are exposed to things all the time. You're exposed to pathogens in your food. If you're like me, you go out to eat, you grab something on the way or whatever. People that you do not know have handled your food. Do they wash their hands before they handle your food? There's a lot of studies out there. I don't want to go into that, but there's a lot of studies that show that the people that are handling your food, you probably are going to not want them handling your food. Okay. However, that's a society that we live in. And so when you're getting these pathogens into the body, your immune system should be clearing that. It should be clearing your viruses, your bacteria, your parasites, and all that kind of thing. So when you have your blood work, you may know this, you may not know this, when you have your blood work, I like to see a CBC with differential, right? Complete blood panel, complete blood count. Why do I want that differential? That differential is the different types of white blood cells that you have. So you probably know that you have platelets. You probably know that you have red blood cells and white blood cells, okay? So you're good on that. Did you know that you've got monocytes, neutrophils, lymphocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. Those five different differentiations of your white blood count go after different critters, right? And so you're, you're, you want to make sure that your white blood count total is in the right range. But then you want to look at that differentiation and find out what type of white blood cells are you making because that is a key to what's going on in your body. And so if you've got a high viral load, you'll have this kind of uh, white blood cell. If you have parasites, you'll have this other kind. And so it's really, really important for us to know that because we want your immune system to be doing what your immune system is supposed to do. However, immune imbalances and chronic inflammation can cause it to attack the body's own tissues and glands, it is called autoimmunity or self-attack immunity. 
In the early stages of this disease, the body makes immune antibodies that er erroneously stick to our own tissues instead of attacking the foreign invaders. Now, you may know of antibodies because we've got some testing that's been going around in the past few years, and that kind of testing tests for antibodies, and if you have them, then you are on the way to an autoimmune issue if you don't change your life, if you don't change your food. This new clinic that I spoke to this week, they, in their protocol, they're very, very strong on lifestyle changes. They're not going to recommend that you do a drug. They're going to recommend that you change your food, that you change your environment, that you change your sleep habits and all that kind of stuff. When the antibodies attach your own tissues, this signals the immune system to send out destructive immune cells called natural killer cells to destroy the tissue just as they would a pathogen. Millions, this is millions of people suffer uh, these kind of disorders for years without treatment because insurance companies will not approve screening for autoimmunity until the patient shows significant signs of organ or tissue destruction. At this point, the patient can be, can be prescribed some sort of immune suppressing treatments. Now we see this, we see the commercials for this all the time. Um, they're called biologics. And what they do is they do help with inflammation. They do help the body with an autoimmune disease. However, it suppresses your immunity. Well, I understand the theory behind that because if your immune system is on overload and it's attacking yourself, if you can damper that down, you're going to preserve your life. So I understand that. But wouldn't it just be a better plan of attack to go after the pathogen, go after the environmental toxin that's causing the body to be confused? To me, that makes a lot more sense. And that's kind of what we do in our clinic. We test for those different things so that if this is something going on in your life, this is something that we're able to help you with. It's something that we're able to get the body unconfused. It takes time. It takes time to do that. It's not something that's going to happen. You come in today and you feel better tomorrow. It's probably going to take you about 90 days to feel different. As you go on through your life and you're not getting tested and you're not getting screened, then you are building more and more of those antibodies. And so you're attacking yourself more and more. Early antibody testing allows patients to make dietary lifestyle modifications to relieve the symptoms and prevent the condition from progressing. So this is really, really important. We had somebody in our clinic uh, about six months ago who had been diagnosed, newly diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And they said they were going to have to quit work because their joints hurt and this and that and the other. So we put them on a protocol. We told them to use the infrared sauna. We've got an infrared sauna here. And I think it was in like 60 days. All the pain was gone. All the blood work came back, you know, perfect. Why? Because the person had made the lifestyle changes. The person had made the environmental changes. And the person had gotten some really good help with supplements that are there to do what they're supposed to do, which is to get the immune system so it is not confused anymore. All right. Here is another example. Let's say a person starts to develop an autoimmune reaction against their joints. It could have been any tissue, skin, thyroid, brain. But in this case, let's make it simple and say that the autoimmune reaction is in their joints. In the early stages, they may suffer from chronic joint pain with varying degrees of recurring pain. At first, their joints look normal. There's no joint fusion, deformity, or arthritic nodules yet. Just pain and inflammation. A doctor's visit will likely uh, result in nothing more than advice to take over-the-counter drug for inflammation and pain. Over the years, the autoimmune reaction progresses and they develop joint fusion or deformity or arthritic nodules. Now, finally, because they're in that degenerative state, they can get a diagnosis so their insurance will pay for testing, their insurance will pay for drugs and that kind of thing. Okay, and so they are labeled with a disease. If their doctor had simply screened them 
for joint antibodies in the early stages. The condition could have been identified and the progression either significantly slowed or completely halted through dietary and lifestyle changes. Now, a lot of people don't think that dietary and lifestyle changes are anything more than a placebo, but I'm here to tell you if you change the internal um, chemistry, chemistry environment, chemical environment, then you're going to change the way your body works. If you change the way your body works, you can actually uh, reverse that autoimmune disease. I belong to a lot of Facebook groups, and one of them is a diabetic uh, group, type 2 diabetes. And they, the people are being told, oh, you now have diabetes, you'll have diabetes for the rest of your life. And yes, your insurance company will keep you as a diabetic, even though you get your blood sugar under control and you get your A1C under control, you're still going to be labeled a diabetic. However, if your body is functioning normally, if you change your diet, you change your lifestyle, you get your numbers in the correct range, how can you still be a diabetic? Because that's how they diagnosed you with blood work being out of balance. Now that your blood work is in balance, they should change their diagnosis, but sadly, they don't. The problem is people, they decide, they believe that once they're told you've got XYZ disease, you're always going to have XYZ disease. That's just not how it has to be. It can be like that. If you buy into that, if you agree with that, if you, you know, you that aligns with what your uh, worldview is, then yeah, you can have it forever. My worldview is let's get a blood test, let's see what we've got, and then let's change it if it's not good. So you have the power to do that. You yourself have the power to change your chemistry. It is called epigenetics. No, epigenetics. I said that wrong. Okay. Genetics is what you're born with. Epigenetics is what you think about what you're born with, how you eat, how you live, who you love, what you think, all those kind of things can turn off bad switches and turn on good switches. So when you have your bad switches turned off and your good switches turned on, then you are a healthy person. So, and we all can do this, okay? All of us can do this. So, autoimmune antibodies are elevated for years before autoimmunity destroys tissue. Unfortunately, both conventional and alternative medicine models do not routinely test for early markers of autoimmunity, nor do they implement diet, nutritional, and lifestyle suggestions that affect the expression of the disease. We do that here. We're going to ask you to change your diet. We're going to ask you to change your sleep habits. We're going to ask you to change a lot of things because we know that if we can change the internal chemistry, we can change the disease process. All right, so we want to do that. It is unfortunate that millions of patients spend much of their lives suffering because of this disconnect, especially considering how clear the research is. Studies show antibodies appear in the early stages of autoimmunity and can be used both as a diagnostic and predictive tool in chemical settings. So let me give you real life examples. I'm a woman. 85% of women have undiagnosed thyroid disease. All right, subclinical thyroid disease. Sometimes a doctor, a really good doctor, will do a full thyroid panel. You've got your um, your T, uh, your TSH, which is the most common one. You've got your free T3, your total T3, your T3-4, your, your total T4, all that. But then you also have your antibodies, your thyroid peroxidase antibodies and your thyroglobulin antibodies. So you're supposed to have those antibodies at a less than 30, I think it is. So if you have antibodies at 14, your doctors are going to say, oh, you're not in a disease process. But yes, you are. You're trending toward a disease process. You should have zero antibodies. Zero. Less than one. That's what you should have. That is what a healthy person has. If you have 14 then you have antibodies that are attacking your thyroid. Are they bad enough to be diagnosed? No, they're not bad enough for a diagnosis, but I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, hey, you're threatening autoimmunity. We need to get this under control and we need to do a little bit better than that. All right. 
A survey conducted by the American Autoimmune Related Diseases Association found that the average patient diagnosed with a serious, which is late stage and clinically obvious autoimmune disease had seen more than four doctors over a four year period before receiving a correct diagnosis. I know of patients who have seen as many as 20 different doctors looking for help. And I've had that experience as well. So a lot of times people will come in and they say, I've seen this doctor, I've seen this doctor, I've seen this doctor. They, they name all the doctors that they've seen. Nobody can tell them what's wrong with them, but they just feel like garbage and they know there has to be a better way. And yet their blood work is perfect. Well, as I said before, on your medical reference range, as long as your blood work is in their reference range, you're not in a disease process. Holistic practitioners, functional medicine doctors, they've got a different reference range. It's narrower. So if you're outside either way of that narrow band, then you're trending toward a disease process. If we can get that trending turned around, and it's a lot easier to get it turned around before it's a full-blown chronic disease. We can still get it turned around. It just costs more money and it takes more time and you feel pooky for a whole lot longer, okay? Why do you wanna do that? I don't want you to do that. You really don't wanna do that, but you don't know what to do. So we're telling you, this article is telling you that if you make lifestyle changes, if you make dietary changes, you can get this reversed. Patients, most patients are not aware that their symptoms are due to the early stages of autoimmune disease, all right? Every supplement and every therapy is a shot in the dark without a professional guiding you. Occasionally, they may stumble on something that seems to be a miracle cure, but for the most part, symptoms of undiagnosed autoimmunity turn into a lifestyle of endless searching and experimenting. Now, I just want to tell you, if, if, if we are new to you, right? We do something called bioenergetic medicine. What is that? We look at the traditional Chinese meridians on your hands and on your feet. We look at what vibratory signatures are there. All right. This is way above my pay grade. I did not make this up. I use a software that is calibrated that when it sees this frequency, it knows it's because of a pathogen. When it sees this frequency, it knows it's because of a chemical. When it sees this pre frequency, it knows that it's whatever it knows that it is, right? We've got trays and trays and trays of data to check to find out what is the culprit that is causing your body to turn on itself. Remember, the most elementary definition is that your body is confused. It thinks that I'm the problem, so it's going to attack me. I'm not the problem. It's what's in me that's not being addressed is the problem. If I can unwind that, if I can unwind that uh, confusion, then my immune system can go back to doing what it needs to do. It can function the way it needs to function, and I can return to uh, a healthy uh, lifestyle. All right. The final comment here is autoimmune management requires a personalized approach of overhauling your diet so that it is anti-inflammatory, removing other inflammatory triggers from your life. They are different from everyone and getting daily physical activity, but not overtraining, getting plenty of good quality sleep every night, avoiding toxins, including toxic situations and toxic people. It also includes getting the right nutrition. Now, we've said before many, many times, and my scanner is over there, we have a scanner that you can see what nutrients are you absorbing and the quantity of nutrients that you are absorbing. There is a easy to read scale on there that says I am absorbing optimum nutrition. If I'm absorbing optimum nutrition, then my body has all the raw ingredients that it needs to be healthy. I have this little bracelet here. It says, know your number. It's purple. You can see my wall is purple. Purple is my favorite color. But on this scanner, purple is the highest, most optimum nutrient absorption that you can get. We do have 
this little basket of all these other color bands. You know which color I'm out of? I'm out of red. Why am I out of red? Because red is the lowest number of uh, nutrients that are absorbed. And most people who come in here, they come in here in the red. So all of my red bracelets are gone and I've got to get some new ones. So that's a lot of information about autoimmunity. I hope that you're not suffering from this. But if you are, I want to give you hope that with the right kind of personalized treatment, personalized diet, personalized supplements, personalized um, analysis, you can get rid of what is confusing your immune system and you can be restored to health. So my time is up. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being with us on this journey. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for doing all the things. It is the weekend. Take care of yourself. Practice self-care because, you know, that's how I am. I'm going to leave here. I'm going to practice self-care and it's going to be a good weekend. Take care and I'll see you next week.